Mother Bob, can you hear me now? Okay, you hear me loud and clear. Thank you. Yes, sir. How long is going to last? I have no idea. Well, I don't have any ID, but we get ready to start. Okay. 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 Again, I'd like to say good morning to each and every one. Good morning. Good morning. We do honor and praise God for life, health, and strength. We thank you for allowing us to be back in the house one more time. At this time, we're going to go and get open up to see if past 10. We're going to ask for a song and a prayer. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Superintendent Deacon Ridley in prayer. We're not feeling that good this morning, but you know, continue praying. In your hands. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Our lesson for today is from the book of Psalms. From Psalms 119, verses 73 to 80. And the subject is God's word brings hope. <clears throat> and like the writer of the other song we just had last last week, and this this uh, writer is going through a lot, but he trusted in God to take care of him. And that's what we are, we are doing too. <clears throat> And we began our lesson, he says, in verse 7 and 3, he says, uh, your hands, he says, with your very own hands, you own me. Now give me wisdom and understand to heed, heed your commandments. And then 7 and 4, he says, all, the, all those who fear and trust in me will welcome me because I too have trusted in your word. I know, O oh Lord, that your decisions are right, and that your punishment was right and did me good. And now let your loving kindness comfort me just as you promised. And he says, surround me with your tender mercies that I may live, for your law is my delight. He says, let the proud be disgraced, for they have cut me down with all their lives. But I have concentrated my thoughts upon your love. He said, let those who fear you 
turn to me for evidence of your wise guidance, and that they may know your laws. And then he says, on the last verse, says, let me be of holy, my heart spotted in your law, so I can always walk without shame, with my head held high. And, and as we look at this, look at this lesson here, and the writer first talks about the vision of God's hand. He says, the writer of, of this song, he began by telling God, your hands have made me and fashioned me. And the, the statement fashion, uh, it reminds us of, reminds the readers of the fact that God reached into the dust of the earth and formed and fashioned a clay doll that he called man. He then breathed in his breath into the clay doll and he became a living soul. And man is saying, and he, the, the psalmist is saying, God, you made me. So it is in your power to give me understanding. He said, I see the psalmist, he did not just want to read the commandments, but he wants to understand what they are saying. And that is a big difference. When you read something, you like to be able to understand what it is saying to you. Sometimes it means you gotta read it over and over. But you, you won't understand it. And so many times you read uh, your Bible or read your Sunday school lesson or whatever, you just don't get it that first time around. You say, now wait a minute, wait a minute. And, and it doesn't make sense to you, but you keep reading, and then God will start revealing to you what it's all about. You know, so he told him, he said, you made me, so it's in your power to give me understanding. He said, I want to just read the commandments. I want to know what the commandments are saying to me. And, and he said he wants to learn from the one who fashioned him and who knows him really thoroughly, inside and out. So he calls on the Lord to give him understanding. That would enable him to learn what God has commanded. You know, he needs understanding from God if he is to learn God's word. Mm. And then the psalmist say, All who feel God are glad to know there's another who walk, who have hope in God's word. And uh, he's saying that there's a there's a few that is following God, but they want to know they got another one following along beside them. And he wanted to know he had others following along beside him. See, when God opened our understanding to his teaching, we should share it with others. <clears throat> we share it with others so they too can understand. And, and you know, as Christians, they should be overjoyed when God has revealed something to someone. And <clears throat> God has, uh, there is no place for jealousy among the believers. You did. And if we, you know, if we seriously study the that. Bible, if we seriously study the Bible, we'll be amazed at what God will reveal to us. And it's kind of like looking in the mirror sometimes. You, God be telling you the things He telling you in the body, and you look at it, and it's like, wow, you know, that sounds like me. And it's amazing what, what He will reveal to you when you diligently read the Bible and, and meditate. And he says, uh, <clears throat> you know, God works in us and through us. He works in us to get us to where we ought to be. And then he works through us so we can help others. And, and you know, and we hope we can respond to the Lord, to the Lord, but the more our response to the Lord will call others to praise God also. And this goes to show, <clears throat> The responsibility believers have to one another. The faith of one can uplift another. And then the psalm said, oh, God, he talks about the affliction. He did a lot of talking about it. He, he expressed his confidence in God's control over human affliction. He said, you know, he trusted the fact that God would allow it. God would not allow anything to come upon him that was not for his own good. It may not look like it at the time, 
And you know, many times afflictions make us closer to God. Mm -hmm. And we pray more when there are problems in our lives. And take, look at Paul for instance. Paul had all these afflictions and Paul suffered, but he said in 2 Corinthians 12 and 7, he was saying, you know, all these things came upon him. He said uh, the reason for his affliction was the experiences and the revelation that God had given him. You know, it's like he knew things that others didn't know. And to board him from getting such a big head and acting like it was all about him, he had this affliction. And he says that uh, the affliction would kept him humble. He said, he said he was given his physical condition, which he became, which became a thorn in his flesh, a messenger from Satan to hurt and bother me, he said. But Paul said, three times I begged God to be, to move. Each time he said no. He said, I am all you need. God told him, he said, I'm all you need. My power shows up best in weak people. And, and Paul said, well, I prayed and asked God to move my, but he did. And you know, sometimes, the affliction sometimes is for our good. You know, just think how some of us would be if we never had affliction. Sometimes we worsen up as we are. We think we are all this. We think we are this. We talk down to people. We think we got something that they don't have. All this stuff. But when you have affliction, it's a different story. And you, you don't have, sometimes you can't be that way because you're so worried about trying to make it through your affliction. And so sometimes they are, they are good for us. And, and see, neither the psalmist nor Paul, you know, question the judgment of the Lord in their affliction. But, but God had assured the psalmist of his love, his grace, his mercy, and kindness. And see, the psalmist here, he's not asking God to remove the affliction. He just asking God to make it possible for him to go through it. He said, help me find comfort in my affliction. And that's what we do sometimes. We pray that God will remove the sickness or the problem, whatever. And then sometimes we say, well, Lord, just give me strength to deal with it. Because some, you really do need God's strength to deal with the problems that we're facing today. It, it, you know, it, it just ain't, it ain't no more little small thing. It's a big thing. And it's a tough thing. And you need, the only God can fix it. And you know, and when you refer to the enemy, he said, he enhanced that he, that he, that the Lord, that they might be confused. And a, and a shame. He said, they might fail. He asked God to let them fail in their attempt to bring him down. They were not honest in pretending friendship with the Psalms. So he said, they deceived him in their dealing with him. He said, that's the pride. They are too proud to humble themselves and receive the Lord. They are lost. He said, this is normal of someone who is lost. He said they have no conscience <clears throat> and they will do whatever it takes to bend it. And then the psalmist said, But you know, though that they dealt with me bad, they treated me, they treated me bad, they were deceitful and all that. They, they dealt with me in a crooked manner. He said, But I won't do the same thing to them as they did to me. He said, I'm not going to do that. Because I remember the teachings of God's law. And you know, it must be kind of hard when you treat it like this. All these things are going against you. And, and the people are acting like that's what they're supposed to do. They act like no big deal and all that good stuff. They treat you in a sort of way. And they think, you know, they bully you, they try to intimidate you, and all that kind of stuff. And they're thinking, well, you know, I've got them. Under my, feet, under my feet. But you see, the thing about it, God tells us whenever we can, don't worry about it. Don't, don't throw a stone for a stone. And that is a hard thing. That's a tip. 
<laughs> I'm talking, it is a hard thing because they done, they done broke you down and done made you mad, you got mad, or mad to sad, and, and you just, you just real weak and warm. And, but it's, it's hard not to give them a dose of their own mess. But God tells us that, ah, David's is mine. Sometimes he said, I go over, well, how long are you going to wait for you to get your business? <laughs> because, because of the way things are sometimes. We're only human. We're only human. But we may not, we, we can help them out there. We don't do it like we were doing it some years ago. But believe me, a little sting is still in there. Every now and then, you want to retaliate. Because... <laughs> Here you are, minding your own business, doing the best you know how. And it looks like every time you talk about it, it's some ugly mess going on. You don't have time for it. The minute you step over here to the right, they make sure they put a stomach block in your back and put you back in the left. But he said, he said, the way they treated me, said, no, that was bad. They, they treated him bad. He said, but you know what, sis? I remember the Lord's teaching. And I'm not, I'm not even going to do them like they did me. He said, I remember the teachings of God's law, so I won't treat them the way they treated me. And like I say, that's hard. You, it, you have to learn to get to that point in God where you can do that. Not everybody is at that point yet. Some of us might still snap. And, and uh, we don't want to, and we hope we don't, but I'm just saying, just how easy it could be when you had enough. When you say, I had enough. Mm. So, so many times you say, now look, that's it. I don't have enough, and I'm not going to deal with it anymore. But then he said, he appealed to the Lord. He said, Lord, sustain me in my time of need. But he said, this, you know, this is not blind. He, he was not blind to his own weakness, realizing that for humans, <clears throat> He said, you know, Lord, just keep me while I'm going through this battle. You know, realizing that, that for him, the heart is the root of the problem. He wants to have a blameless heart. He said, God is living, you know, God is living throughout the Bible begins in the heart. And it works out into a transformed behavior. It is, it's not a cosmetic makeover. They try to make it look like the appearance of godliness while the heart is not devoted to God. He said, the psalmist said that he did not want to be ashamed before God at the throne of grace. Instead, he wants, instead he wants uh, to have confidence having Christ's righteousness and the true grace of God implanted in him. He wants to have God's grace and righteousness in him so that he don't act like that. And he wants to be so he would not be ashamed to come before the throne of God. And that's what we want to. We, we're trying all our best to live best we know how. Cause so we don't be ashamed when we have to stand before God. See, that in that she has a different kind of confidence to approach the throne of God when we know we have been saved and redeemed. And that's what the psalmist wanted. He wanted to feel comfortable so that, you know, anytime he could come before God, he didn't feel ashamed or anything. But these people were giving him a hard time. You see, the most important thing is to be right with God in our own hearts. <laughs> and, you know, you can have hundreds of people praying for you. But if you don't personally accept Jesus, you won't be saved. I don't care who stands with you in church or who comes, who prays for you not, but there's some things you got to do. And if you don't do it, then you don't, you know, you're not accepted Christ. You're still out there. And then, you know, by following his law, we're living life. We're living a life that is pleasing to him, and one that will bear no shame when we stand before him. Now, you know, throughout life, we already promise trials and struggles, and no one will make it through life 
totally unharmed. Not totally untouched. No. What does that mean? You might may have to you personally, uh, <clears throat> or you you struggle whether you have struggled or suffered a tragedy, or whether you have or watched someone, watch your family, your loved one go through this. But it's saying that you will see it sometime in your life. And he's saying that no matter what, that uh, <clears throat> you are going to have these things. You can't avoid it. You can't get around it. And, and see, uh, <clears throat> you will go through this or you'll watch somebody go through it. You're going to, tragedy going to strike us all. Trouble, I put this way, not necessarily tragedy, but trouble is going to strike all of us sooner or later. You look around at your family, how we want to look at our family. For some of us, most of our families are down. And some of us were sick, fully died, some were quick, and all of that. But, but it's saying that it's going to be there. You're going to have it. So, so you know, just buckle down and expect it. And we're going to face affliction. You know, that's just the nature of a fallen world that we live in. No, but we also promise God will be with us through our every step, and He won't abandon us. He said, "That's why we can still have faith in God during the hard time." You see, it's it's no problem when you, when the good times come that you can have faith. You say, "God is blessing, God is good, and all this stuff, and God is good all the time." And but when you're down and you're suffering. And it looks like there's not going to be no let up. You see, you know, can we still, what, what the Psalms is saying, can we still pray to God then? Can we still say God is good all the time, all the time God is good? Can we say that then? This is, and, and, and on, in order to do that, you've got to have God to help you through these afflictions, through these trials. And the Psalms is said, Lord, just give me comfort. Give me comfort. He didn't even ask God to move the affliction. He said, give me comfort. And I know uh, for myself, the first thing I would ask God is heal me. You know, get rid of it all. <laughs> but he didn't even ask for that. He just said, give me comfort to deal with it. Now in Paul's case, Paul wanted to, uh, Paul asked God to take that away from him. But God didn't. God said, no. He said, I beg God three times, and he said, no. So he, God told him, said, you know, I, I, I got you back. Don't worry. Whatever comes up, I know what to do. He said, when you get weak, I'll come in. I'm strong. He said, my power works best in weak people. So don't worry about it. You go on. That's something you're going to be having to deal with. So Paul, Paul didn't get no relief. But the, and the psalmist, the writer of this, he didn't even ask God to take away. He just told us to get him calm to deal with all this stuff. So he said, God said he's gonna be with us every step of the way. And, and that's and that's all we got to lean on. We got hope and we got our relationship with God. And the, and the ones that don't have a relationship with God, sometimes they might do that they commit um, suicide. They may do anything. Because they have no other hope. Uh, they turn to other people and, and there's nobody there to help them. But when you've got God, He said, I'll never leave you and I'll forsake you. But He told us that we would have these trials. And, and we can take comfort in God's word because we know that He's good and faithful. He'll bring us out on the other side of our affliction and we'll be strong. We are no more. We we would think about, oh, I didn't realize that when that was back there, I was having this problem. I didn't I didn't see all of this. Now I see. God kept me from getting into something worse. You see, sometimes when we ask God, sometimes God has to just sit us down because sometimes some of us can be a mess. He has to set us down, and when He put you down, and you don't. Um, <clears throat> You don't have time to be active of you. Then you turn to God and ask God for whatever, all things, you know, healing or whatever. You turn and ask God for those things. But I'm saying, sometimes 
If God is strong, there's no telling what we do sometimes, what we get into. Because sometimes what we see really ain't what we think we see. So if you didn't have God to look out for us, we'd be in a mess. Amen. And we can take comfort in his word that he is good and faithful. And like I said, he's going to bring us out on the other side. We're going to be strong, wiser. And, and, and we're going to love his law because we see what it has done for us by living like God told us. It makes a whole lot of difference. We still suffer just like the other folks do. And we're going to suffer. But the thing of it is, it's like the footprints in the sand. God is walking beside us. And we only see one set of footprints. He's carrying us. And, and, and it's, it's like, we, we don't have our situation. So we don't, we can say, like, like the song to say, uh, uh, um, Lord, I'm not asking you to remove the affliction, but I am asking you to give me comfort. I got to have your help to deal with. It. It's kind of like, you know, sometimes you pray and God heal you. Sometimes you pray. And, and sometimes you pray and not necessarily for healing all the time. Some things, sometimes he calms the storm. And sometimes he calms you in the storm. But you know, you're still going through the storm. But you ain't, but you're not praying like you used to be. Because he's calming you. He's giving you confidence and helping you get through it. So he's calming you through the storm. And so, you know, we, we can tell him, but you know. We're not asking you to remove the affliction, Lord. Make it possible for us to go through. You know you're gonna have this, but if you know you got God going with you, you just gotta, you just say, well, this is something I got to deal with. All of us got some things we just got to deal with. We can't, we can't do nothing about it. Sometimes it's family situation, sometimes it's our own personal situation, and sometimes it's, uh, it's outside. But we all got something. We just got, we don't like it. We don't, we don't feel like it's right or whatever. But we have to deal with it. We have to deal with it. And so we're asking God, Lord, you know, you don't, you know, even if you don't remove it, give us comfort to get through these, these afflictions. It's kind of like the song that says, Lord, you don't have to move the mountain. Just give me the strength to climb. You don't have to take away the stumbling block, but just lead me all around. So God may leave the stumbling block there, He leave the mountain there, and He just leads you around. Look what happened when when He parted the Red Sea. I mean, these Pharaoh right on track with these folks, and it looked like He was just about caught. But what did He say? When He got there, they crossed over. And the water came right back, Pharaoh and his folks couldn't do it. So what we're saying is that, you know, God is our only hope in this world today. He is our only hope. And look, we're, we're going through some stuff. And it ain't no yet. We probably right in the midst of some things. <clears throat> and therefore, we, we don't know what tomorrow morning to bring, but since we know who holds tomorrow, that's good enough. That's good enough. We know who holds tomorrow. So what so what we do is think about when the road get rough, we say, now nah, Lord, I don't know why I'm going through this. And it seems like sometimes the followers of Christ, seem like every time you turn, they got they seem to be having it harder than some others. It seems that way. But the thing about it, you got God walking right along the side. And you can say, like I said, you can say, Lord, you ain't have to move the mountain now. Just you know, just give me a straight climb. Because we are climbing mountains every day. Are there any comments? Me, I want to thank God for you this morning. Thank God for that awesome sermon you taught us this morning. Thank you. Are there any other comments? Or 
just go ahead and add to it, but you know, as you talk about trials and tribulations in life, you know, the test and faith in life, and we have to learn uh, patience in all things that we deal with. Uh, we have to learn patience in everything we deal with. I say it all things. Mm-hmm. We have to learn patience in everything we deal with. Because if we just learn patience in a lot of things we deal with, those things we think we don't need patience in, we're going to be tested. Because so we need patience in everything that we deal with. So when you, with, particularly when you're dealing with people, you have to realize that uh, everyone is different. Somebody may come to you a different way. But think about how we how we live and still some how we live now. You know, when we don't let Christ have control in our lives, when we don't when we don't follow His path, or we all uh, we all fall short. That's true. And we already know, we already made a promise that we're going to have some trials and tribulations so you can look for those. And uh, that uh, first Samuel 5 to me is remind, reminds us of those afflictions that, that may have come upon us. We, we will deserve those and more. It's not, he's not giving me afflictions for something that someone else did. Mm-hmm. It's, it's what I've done. Uh-huh. So, um, sometimes it doesn't make us feel any better, but uh, <laughs> 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 he assures us that those judgments are right and that thou in faithfulness can afflict them. Yeah, and he said it was good that he afflicted them because of the uncle of him. And uh, like I said, we don't know, see, this one has this situation. That one has another situation. The people you know that's going on, some had one problem, some left here with what some people still live with. It, we don't know God's plan for us. He has a plan for each one of us. We don't know how much sickness we're going to have on this side, how broke we're going to get on this side, and, and just bad the situation. We, we don't know what we're going to deal with on this side. So we can be reminded that we are in a weird situation. Right. No matter what it is. Biden or Trump or uh, Ellis not here, you know, when uh-huh. the service is over, we don't, you know, if we stay here, God's going to be with us. If we go, we're going to be with him. Right. So I can't lose in this situation. Oh, so yes. what we need to do is continue to tell people, come on, join me, because you can't lose. Right. Or take a chance on something else that someone's talking about that you know is not true. You know, you can't, you can't lose in this situation. And, then and then that's why sometimes it's hard even some of our loved ones go on sometimes. They've been through too much and they say, you know, we probably go to the nursing home this morning and find 20 people that are ready to go now. And But, they, you know, they're still here. Uh-huh. And sometimes it's just hard. It I mean, it's, just easy, it's easy, easier to see people that, that are ready to go, go home. Uh-huh. And sometimes you get home, you know, you get, you don't get homesick like, what do we want to go today? But I want to know I'm going one day. I'm not homesick now. Don't get drunk. I'm <laughs> I want to see y'all some more on this side. But if I don't, it's just so good to know that it's all right. That's what it is. You know, you look at you know you look at me and even looking like this, I don't look like what I've been through. <laughs> and I know that I know you can say that. And I know some folks yeah. can say that. Yeah. Even looking like this, uh-huh. I know I don't look like what I've been through. I can't look like because y'all wouldn't even look where that did. But I'm just saying, you're in a win-win situation. So. When everything's around you all stirred up, uh, learn to be the one in the calm in the middle of it. <laughs> you know, if you if you need to talk to me, talk to me. Because, you know, when you leave me, you know, it's, it's done. Because I'm picking up another load of problems. So you don't have to worry about that anymore. But I want to be a common spirit to someone to know that, you know, those that know me, you know, like you know me. Mm-hmm. You know, you know what I've been through. Yeah. So when you see me calm, you, some people, you know, the, thinking, well, what's wrong with that woman? She's sitting there like she ain't got a problem in the world. Mm-hmm. I don't. Mm-hmm. I'm done with it now. I'm in the yeah. short road. Yeah. So, you know, I, I got to get out of here. Yeah. I got to get out of here. So I'm going to leave it. And I'm going to leave that spirit. That's where we, I think we should be. And when people come in, no matter what they look like or don't look like, they should feel that connection with us. And we, But we want to look like the world instead of vice versa. Mm-hmm. But there, we should be different. I don't mean, I mean, we I got to be. We got to be. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, mm-hmm. I'm done. And it's, 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 it's 
it's late in the evening. Now. Right. This one, I always say, you know, you wake up and you look out. Sometimes you look out the window first thing in the morning. You see how the sky looks? You know, sometimes it looks like... Is it time now? Yeah. And sometimes you look out and say, you know, I know this is a good day for the Lord to come back. And you look out and you say, you know, this is a good day to go home. And so we know we're not going to be here long. Even if you get 20 more years, it ain't long. We said I just stopped by on my way home. That's right. That's exactly right. And so it's, it's sad, but we got to go. And, and we, you know, we're so close to the end of the road, we ain't got time for a lot of foolishness. You don't have time for this foolishness. And so either you're going to be for God or you're not. And, and, and if you're not, get out of the way, you know. And let the people who want to serve the Lord, serve the Lord. Are there any other comments? Thank you, dear. And see, we can like the song said, when things are tough, when you know, we're going through, it's kind of hard, but you, but to Thank God it's going to take away all your problems and let you live a good life. That's for the other side, not this side. So all you can do on this side is say, Lord, just help me. Give me strength to get through this. And give me confidence in my affliction and help me. You know you're going to have some affliction. You just ask God to give you confidence. Because it ain't going to last for so long. Yeah, that, uh, you know, the song that I was moving at just now, what you say that all about, you know, if you can't help me, please don't stop. Me. Don't stop me. Move out of my way. And don't try to block me. <laughs> Amen. So we're supposed to be encouraging one another and helping one another along the way. As Christians. And, and, that's what we're supposed to be doing. And we definitely are the household of faith. We're supposed to be doing that. And we are to be a shining light. To this dark world. We're supposed to be the right now. That's right. And, and you, were, you know, people um, and, and people are glad to know that someone is that they can talk to. They got someone they can talk to in that time of need. There's somebody who walks alongside of them and say, you know, come on. And sometimes they don't even need you to talk. Some just need you to be there. Just to know that they got somebody there. Sometimes what they're going through, sometimes they don't even want to tell you, which is all right. But you just go there and just sit there and y'all drink tea or coffee or whatever. And if they decide they want to talk, that's fine. But you never know how much good you do, did them by just being there. So that makes a whole lot of difference. Yeah. <laughs> With that, sometimes it might be best if you don't talk. Well, look, look at Joe's no. history. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Eventually, you know, just, they, they just had to, just had to be wise. That's right. That's right. You don't have to say anything all the time. Just be there. Just be there in the right spirit. Are there any other comments? Yes, and then just um, uh, being there sometimes, um, um, I don't know how people going to receive it. So I'm just going to put it out there. Mm -hmm. I have no control of how they receive it. And, and then the other thing is, I am 61 years old. I can't count how many presidents I, um, that, that, that I have been alive under. And I know some of y'all are older than I am. But I ain't worried about nothing because I made it through all of them. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make it through the next one. Yeah. I don't care whether they black, white, Republican, Democrat, and I tell people all the time, I ain't arguing with nobody over no two white men. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna do that. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna support the democratic agenda because I know we, when black folk do better, everybody gain. So I'm about what's right, and I'm gonna support who mm -hmm. has got the better interests of all folk, just like our God got interests for everybody, not just select few. So I, I'm, I'm going to survive. I, I ain't worried about the things that's going on around me. I'm going to make it. And like uh, Sister Ella said, I'm going to win either way. 
And we're talking about the White House, but it, it, you better worry about what's going on locally. <laughs> right, exactly right. That's what I'm saying. Local, I mean, that's right. <laughs> that's right. And when you get through with all that concludes our Sunday school lesson for today. Thank you, Trustee Book. Praise the Lord. You teach me to come in. Mark, go on. Good morning, sister. Good morning. <laughs> We're waiting on you. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I was talking this morning with a final prayer. Our song was shining a little light. Make a little light shine. Our first prayer is Romans 23 and 3. And the first prayer was by me. And we come out the final prayer how disobedient Pharaoh was. They took ten plagues, but the final, final broke him down to listen to what the Lord had told him to do from the very beginning. And we had seven students and four dollars. Amen. Every time we have someone from the their adult class. But I learned this morning that we all need to pin on human beings. The only one we need to pin on. God, we got all the power, can and will do everything, and He can do anything except fail. Amen. Amen. At this time, we are have our reading from the city and accept the text. Good morning. Good morning. Minutes for the Anderson Chapel in St. Stephen's Sunday School, July 21st, 2024. Sunday School was called to order at 10 o'clock by Deacon J. May. No, Ray May. It's alright. Opening song was Amazing Grace by Mother Barnes. Prayer was given by Reverend Payson. Lesson topic God's Word Brings Hope. Background passage, Psalm 119, verses 73 through 80. The key verse, your hands have made it fashion and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. Psalm 119, 73. The lesson was reviewed for 40 minutes by Trustee Booth. The marks were given by representative from the classes, attendance is 17, offering $34. But it's hot. All officers remain the same. Student secretary, no school. You have heard the reading of the men. Are there any corrections? If not, we got to, we'll receive the men as given. At this time, we we just kind of um praying and be be dismissed by amen. 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 Mother Barnes, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> 
to it this morning. Mother Brown, how is the audio this morning? I'm sorry. It was good. It was good this morning. Thank you. I forgot I had Because I don't want y'all to hear whatever I hear. We appreciate that, but I just want to make sure that you have a good experience this morning. Thank you.